let's talk about the Mackie SRM Flex. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you've watched my other YouTube videos, you're probably thinking, Brian, why did you buy another column array? All you do is buy them, complain about them, make videos complaining about them, and then sell them. And I think in one of my last videos, I said, I'm done buying column arrays. Well, I don't blame Mac yet, I blame HK Audio. Uh, I actually, I'm turning over a new leaf when it comes to column speakers. I'm not going to call them column arrays anymore, just column speakers. I might accidentally slip and say column array, but column speaker. Um, in the uh, HK Audio's Polar 10 like reveal video, there's a part in the middle of the video where they say Polar 10 might look like a line array, but technically speaking, it's a point source system. Proper loud on the dance floor, dissipating volume into the back of the room. And it's the first time I've ever heard a manufacturer say that. You know, a lot of manufacturers of these column speakers will say how, oh, it's clear in the front, it's clear in the back, there's no volume difference. Well, that's array benefit. And I've got videos where I talk about how you really don't get any line array benefit from these. You know, if you've got six two-inch speakers, you know, you've got a 12-inch array, a one-foot array. If you don't have a six-foot array, you're really not going to get any benefits. I think maybe eight, eight feet is where you really start to get some benefits. So, while there's array technology in these, you know, there's a six driver array that's benefiting from driver coupling, but it, there's not an array that really gives you line array benefit. So I'm, I'm turning over a new leaf and you know, unless you see me reviewing like an HK Audio Element system or a K Array system, something where it is meant to be a line array that you can scale in size, I'm just going to call them column speakers. And, you know, 10 inch in the bottom, you know, six two inch speakers in the top. This is essentially a 10 inch point source system. Just think of it like that. And that's how I'm thinking about it. And there's getting to be so many of these on the market that I'm not going to compare it to a 10 inch equivalent. I'm going to compare it to a column speaker equivalent. I've already got other videos where I complain about how, you know, dispersion isn't... A point source speaker can contain dispersion better, doesn't just go all over the place. You know, with these, they just go all over the place. So, and all of them do. So I'm going to stop complaining about that too. You get what you get with a column speaker. It's designed to be compact. It's designed to look neat and clean and, you know, designed to be portable and not use speaker stands. So, as I said, I'm turning over a new leaf. I'm going to compare this to competing column speaker systems. Uh, so with that being said, let's start with the bag. I know everybody loves when I talk endlessly about the bags. But you know, it, it, I'm a big bag guy. When I first um, started buying speakers. I didn't have, I didn't put ba bags in them. I didn't put uh, them in bags. I didn't have covers for my stuff. And, uh, you know, it got beat to shit. You know, and then I started buying covers and I'll tell you, when I sell something used, it pretty much looks like new even multiple years later because of the covers. And as I've said, you know, I'm a big fan of Mackie's covers. Like, the bag that you get for the columns is really nice. It is definitely the same quality as, like, their mixer bags. Um, so let's just look at this quick. So it's got a little pocket up front. Keep the power cord in there. I thought the power cord seemed a little thin and chintzy, but it does the job. I don't like to have a big, thick one that you can't. You know, it's so hard and tough, you can't really wind it very good anyways, so it seems pretty good. It's got a little handle here, um, and instead of doing, like, the standard coffin design where you'd unzip it like that and have it open up and then set it in like that, they went an alternate route here and made it so the end unzips, and then the pieces are right in the end. 
And I actually kind of like this as opposed to flipping over a cover. Zipper seems pretty solid. So, definitely a fan of this bag. We'll get to what's in it in a minute. Now, this guy right here. Not as big of a fan with this bag. And, you know, the quality is just not the same. You know, like on this bag, the edging is, it's like some harder plastic stuff. I don't know. Let's see if I can get close to the camera. You see how nice and clean the edge is there? Now you see the edge on this thing? It's just, it's definitely not the same quality. And, you know, one would have to assume they're made in the same factory. I don't know. But this is nice, thick. It's like every other Mackie case I've had. It's, it's, it's got some good padding in there to protect the columns. This is really thin, chintzy. I think it's the same material, but it's definitely not... It doesn't have as much padding in it, and it's not... It's, it's not as refined. I mean, it's, it's gonna do the job. I don't, I'm not gonna be throwing this in a trailer or anything. Um, I think it'll do the job. We shall see. Wish it was padded. Wish it was the same quality as the column bag. My other complaint is the, the hole here. Now, obviously, it makes for grabbing the handle nice and easy. But the finishing touch that I usually like to see is a little Velcro flap over the top. And, you know, just a little, little flap that Velcros down, and when you go to grab the handle, you take the flap up. Now, to some people, that might not matter. But I keep all my stuff in the shop bay, and I'm in Fargo, North Dakota. I mean, this is the Windy City, and, you know, there, there's a landfill about, I don't know, four blocks up the road. Not to say there's dirt flying everywhere, but it's dusty, it's windy, there's crap flying all over the place. There really is. Not, not garbage, but dust and stuff. And so stuff in my shop bay gets a little dusty. You know, if I have the door open and it's a windy day, there will get dust cover on stuff. That's another reason I really like covers. You know, and those Velcro flaps keep the dust out of the handle. Now, luckily, you know, there's, there's, you can't get to the connector from here. I mean, it could maybe blow back here, but the connector is up front. It's covered. The mixer's covered. So it really is just the handle exposed. So if you get a dusty handle, you get a dusty handle. But for anybody that keeps their gear in a storage unit, keeps it in their garage, you know, a shop, you run into the potential of dust. And uh, so anyways, I would have liked to have seen a little flap. It's a little flimsy. I would have liked to have seen a little better quality. But at the end of the day, the covers come free with it, so you can't complain too much. You know, most other manufacturers, you have to buy the covers separate, and you're gonna pay, you know, 50 to maybe 80 bucks for the cover, so. Being as it comes free, I'm happy to not have to spend any extra money. Now, with that being said, let's talk about the speaker system. So this is probably my favorite size when it comes to a column array. I kind of like the 8 to 10 inch low mid driver and like the 6 2 inch tops, or 6 2 inch drivers in the top. I think it's a good size for a lot of what I want to use this for. You know, it's loud enough to where I can rent it out for like a do-it-yourself karaoke rental where somebody might be having a back part, backyard party and there's like 50 people there. Uh, it's loud enough for a ceremony, um, you know, an extension speaker at a wedding, say, you know, barn venues are popular around here, you're DJing upstairs, the bar is downstairs, maybe you want to wirelessly transmit to another speaker at a lower volume on the main level. You know, these are a good speaker to sit in a corner, nobody sees it, but it's got good coverage to, you know, cover the area. Uh, corporate events, I, I know they like to tout corporate events, I'm a little iffy on them because I have used column arrays or column speakers in 
small spaces with wood walls and hard floors and lavalier mics and it's really hard to get the volume up without feeding back because the lavalier picks up everything. You really have to have a lavalier gained up pretty hot because you're so far away from the mic talking and, and then the sound through these starts funneling through. I mean, it's a recipe for feedback. So I haven't used this at a corporate event. I just got this. this so this is, a, I should say, this is a uh, preliminary thoughts video. I used it in the shop. I might do a karaoke gig this weekend and use it. I'm trying to decide between going out and doing a karaoke gig or a photo booth gig. But I kind of want to use this so I might do the karaoke gig. But anyways, when I get bigger column systems, like with 12 inch woofers, bigger tops, I always wind up disappointed because I always want it to do more than it can do. And so I think this is my favorite size because it's small, it's compact, and it does what I expect it to do. I don't expect any more out of it than what it does. So definitely my favorite size when it comes to a column speaker. And what this is replacing is actually my JBL Eon 1. I've got uh, somebody coming tomorrow to pick it up to buy it. And, you know, I had a, I'll, pro I'll, I'll edit in a little comparison between the two at, uh, at the end of this video. But it was a very lateral move. My main objective with going from the Eon 1 to this was I was looking for something smaller. And I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the size difference. But this is probably a third smaller. It's 10 pounds lighter, I want to think. Um, you know, I had some older women rent a do-it-yourself karaoke rental, and the JBL Eon one was just a little heavy for them to get up into the back of their SUV. So, it, uh, you know, I was looking for something with the same sound quality, same output, but just in a smaller, more compact package. And this fit the bill, so I thought I'd buy it and try it out. And so far, like, I like it. Um, I really like the design. I like what, what Mackie's doing with the design. I really like the mixer. And I'll get a little bit more into details. There's a little close-up of the mixer. And these are like infinity turn knobs. You'll see right here is an indicator light. So when you turn this, it lights up as you turn it up. And I'll get into why I like that in a minute. But overall, I think this is a very nice modern design. I like the green LED that they've got down here. The, uh, it, like I said, it's lightweight. The columns fit in nicely. This looks like a nice modern speaker. I feel like the JBL Eon 1 looks old in comparison to it. I like the uh, the columns. So with the Eon 1, the spacer columns are just plain plastic, no grill. With the Mackie, they did put the exact same grill on the front of the spacers as they did with the uh, top speaker column. So Eh, just so I don't, I'm going to leave a spacer out. You can put all three spacers in, like any column system. They say, you know, if you're on a stage, leave a couple spacers out to get covered for the audience. But let's be honest, uh, even Mackie says this in their quick start guide. Don't set this up on a hollow stage. You're going to lose a lot of bass coupling. Put it on the floor. All right, so there it is. You can tell... This one's got a logo right there. So design-wise, it's nice, it's lighter, it's sleeker, it's app-controlled. Now, sound-wise, very comparable to my JBL Eon 1. I did a side-by-side, -side and I had to go back and forth a couple times. So the first song I put on, I did think the JBL sounded a little bit more muffled than the Mackie did. And then, but then I switched songs and every song I played after that, I thought they sounded the same. So, I don't know. 
Same sound quality, I will say, out of the tops. They both have uh, six two-inch drivers. They both have a 10-inch sub in the bottom. The Eon 1 is a bigger cabinet. And, you know, so I thought maybe with this I'd be losing some bass. I think maybe they're just tuned differently. So the Eon 1 has more of that bigger kind of boomy bass sound. And maybe seems like it gets louder, but it might just be a higher frequency, and that's why it seems boomy and louder. Whereas the Mackie, I feel like they tuned it maybe to have tighter, tighter, more clean, low-end bass. If that makes sense, like, it doesn't sound as boomy, but the bass sounds tighter and lower. So I think they did a really good job of EQing this speaker. I think it sounds pretty good. I, one thing I was a little hesitant on is the crossover point between the top and the bottom is 600 hertz. And if you look at a lot of the column arrays, they're right around like 200 in this, in this realm for name brand. Name brand ones are right around 200. So I thought 600 might be a little high. You know, if you're talking out of it, I mean, a good, the clarity of your voice is obviously going to come out of the, the, the column. But some of your voice, the low end, is going to come out of the sub with this. And, you know, if you're a really low bassy singer, I mean, this probably isn't the speaker system for you anyways, but, you know, just know you're going to, I felt like you're going to have that separation. And in a room full of people, maybe you will, I don't know. I think it sounds good this way, and it was one of the things that I, like, I held off on buying this for, like, two weeks, because I was like, I don't know, that's a pretty high crossover point. But I almost want to think, since they put the crossover point higher, when you're standing in front of it, it just sounds more together. And, you know, it doesn't sound like it's missing anything, and I think maybe with other column speakers, because they try to drive the crossover point so low that's where you wind up missing that kind of low mid bass and they come out with a you know a fairly scooped sound so I think Mackie did a good thing here I'm, I'm happy with how they did it and and it's really gotten me thinking like I do like the speaker I'm actually gonna order another one pretty much right away uh, so I have a pair of them and I've been thinking about getting the, uh, I believe it's the DLM 12S, which is like their little 12 inch subwoofer. Cause I was thinking, you know, if I have two of these and I have a DLM 12S, I can run out of my controller into the sub, cross the sub over at like 90, maybe 80. And I'll try between 80 and hundred and see what sounds the best and then send the rest to here. So you got the sub maybe doing, you know, everything up to 80, 80 to hundred, somewhere around there. And then since this is crossed over at 600, the, the, the 10 inch will actually be doing like 100 to 600, and then this will be doing 600 hertz and up. So, you know, if this was crossed over at, at say 200 hertz, you know, you'd have an extra sub, but then the sub here really wouldn't be doing a whole heck of a lot because you'd have your actual sub doing, you know, everything under 100 hertz, and then from 100 to 180 or 100 to 200, you know, the 10-inch would be working, and, you know, obviously it's really not doing a whole heck of a lot at that point. So I think this might work better with that configuration. It'll be a while before I buy this. So it's a slow season, so I don't have a whole lot of money to spend. But I am going to try to try to get the second column so I have a pair of these things. And then sometime maybe in the summer, I'll add on the DLM-12S. And I'll probably at that point, once I gig with both of these, Maybe with that sub, I'll do a follow-up video just on, you know, how this thing works out in the wild and also how it works with using a separate sub. I could use one of my Yamaha subs, but, you know, I like to keep everything the same brand, so I'm going to wait to do that until I can buy the Mackie sub, too. But, um, anyway, sound quality is good. I'm pretty impressed with the sound. Definitely, if you're trying to decide between the JBL and the Mackie, just merely on sound quality, 
it's 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 a coin toss. They sound very similar. I just feel like there's that minor difference in how the 10 inch is tuned. A little bit more boomy. Like they say the JBL Eon one I think goes down to like 37.5 at negative 10. 37.5 hertz at negative 10. Well, um, it doesn't sound as low as the Mackie does, and the Mackie's only rated down to 40 hertz at negative 10. And I think it just has to do with the tuning. So, uh, toss up there on, on sound quality wise. They're both very similar. But size wise, looks wise, feature wise, the, Ma the Mackie wins. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the rear panel and the app. So, like I said before, I really like how they did the knobs, where it's like just an infinity spin and there's like an LED indicator as to, you know, where the knob is. And the reason I like that is, is because of the app. So say, say you're an acoustic guy. And, you know, you, you got your iPad there, you got your phone there, you're mixing your show. And, um, I don't know, you get feedback or something. And, you know, maybe your phone, like, you know, went black or something. So you can reach down and just turn the volume knob down a little bit. And you know exactly where you are. You know, that might sound like, well, duh, right? And that's how it should work. But, I owned the RCF JMix 8, and that also had an app and a digital mixer. But the way that one worked was, say, I was mixing with the tablet, and they didn't have infinity spin knobs, so there was a definite, like, it's off, 12 o'clock, it's on. So say, you know, I turned the knob to 12 o'clock, but then I went and mixed with the app, and say, you know, I had to turn it up during the gig. At some point, if I went back to the RCF JMix 8 and grabbed the knob and turned, the volume would instantly go to where, back to 12 o'clock, right where the knob position was. So that's where these, like, yeah, I feel like they got a name. If these kind of knobs have a name, throw it down in the comments section. I just keep, keep calling them infinity spin, because you can just keep spinning them. But... I like the way that they did the mixer here, and the way that it works with the app. Huge fan of it. Uh, it's got, you know, two XLR quarter inch combo jacks, um, microphone or high Z input. Uh, they've only got high and low shelf, there's no mids, so there's not a huge amount of EQing capability. You know, if you really want to fine tune your sound, you're going to have to use an external mixer. But for me and what I plan on using it for, I probably won't even touch the EQ, except maybe on a microphone to kill the low end. But it's got speech mode. Uh, I'll get to that in a second here. So it's also got three kinds of reverb. I haven't tried those out yet. If I do the karaoke show, though, I'll, I'll listen to those and update that in the next video. Uh, one plus over the Eon, again, is that it has EQ modes. So it's got music, speech, and live. And, you know, maybe in a corporate event, when you throw on speech, that might make the difference. See, my other column array that I used during that uh, corporate event did not have that, so, you know, may, that might help with EQing. I don't know. So I'm, I'm going to give it a try at some events. We'll, we'll see how it works down the road. But so far, the, the EQing stuff works pretty nicely. Um, like I said, I haven't used the reverb. Channel 3, 4 is stereo, stereo quarters. One thing I wish they would have done here, which I think there's room for it, but they didn't, is, you know, just on the same input, it would have been nice to have the stereo quarters with also stereo RCAs above it to give you, you know, you've got XLRs, you've got quarters, you've got a headphone jack on this thing. The one thing it's missing is the RCAs. Would have been nice to have that as an option. I do like that it's got the mix out so you can link it to another one. Uh, one thing I do wonder, like, and, and I won't be able to answer this until I buy my second one, but when you use the mix out, you know, I assume you plug it into channel one with it in microphone mode. Where do you turn the volume up 
to make these the exact same? Like, do you max it out and then the mix out kind of gauges the sound? Like, I, I'm not sure exactly. And maybe I'm overthinking that part, you know, just thinking that, well, my my going back and forth between speakers trying to like level out the sound between the two of them like is this one really loud but I got this one turned only up to a quarter so it's really quiet or do you just throw the like if this is the master that all your sounds going into and the other one's the slave do you just max out the volume on the slave and then this one will adjust the single signal through the mix out as to how loud the second one's gonna be I don't know so that'll be something to uh, to try to figure out. It does have Bluetooth on the same channel as the headphone jack. Uh, the Bluetooth works really well and it's kind of cool. You can play a song on Spotify and flip back and forth you know, into the app and adjust the sound and stuff. So I do like that. Um, one thing I will say, now this was before I downloaded the app and updated the firmware. Because as soon as I put the app on my phone and I was connected to this, it said, hey, there's a firmware update which is obscenely slow, by the way. And I think the reason it was as slow as it was is as it's transmitting the firmware, my screen on my phone will black out. And I think when my screen blacks out, it stops transmitting. So you kind of got to keep tapping your screen, keep the screen on as it's sending the data, because then you can pretty much watch it plug along. But I let it sit for probably 20 minutes with the screen blacked out. I opened it back up and the bar had hardly moved. So. Uh, one little thing there, you know, if you're going to update the firmware, keep the screen on to keep it transmitting. But before I updated the firmware, I, I started out by testing this out with the Bluetooth and it got good and loud. When I was doing the back and forth between my JBL Eon 1 and the SRM Flex, I used the dual quarter inch because I wanted to just easily swap back and forth. I didn't want to be swapping Bluetooths. And I did the uh, I did the Eon one, got loud, listened to it. Uh, I plugged it in to the Mackie and I had to max out the volume and it was not loud. I mean, it, the volume was up there but it was nowhere near like gig level. Like it wasn't even close to as loud as it was on the Bluetooth. So I don't know if that's, you know, an issue with my phone in the output. Well, it couldn't be because it was loud on the JBL, but it was quiet on the Mackie. And now, I don't, maybe this is a firmware update. That might have been one of the things that got fixed in the firmware update. I don't know. I haven't tried it since. But uh, the quarter inch volume seemed oddly low, especially compared to the Bluetooth. Uh, I haven't plugged any mics in. Like I said, I haven't really used this a whole lot. Well, I haven't really used it at all outside of listening to some music in the shop. So the next video I make on this will be a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more thoughts about how the microphones sound. Um, I'll update on the quarter inch if I hook a DJ mixer up to it and plug it into the plug into the quarter inch. You know, do I run into the same volume issues as I did with my phone? Just seemed weird that the, the volume was quieter out of the quarter inch than the Bluetooths. And I mean, I had main volume maxed out. I had the channel three, four volume maxed out. I had my phone maxed out and it just wasn't loud. Like you, you couldn't gig at that volume. So not sure what's up with that. I didn't try the headphone jack. I actually might try that uh, after this video. Try the quarter, dual quarters and then plug into the headphone jack and see if there's a volume difference between the two. But like I said, that could be one of the things that the firmware update fixed. Uh, just one thing to touch on here that is a suggestion for Mackie. I hope somebody from Mackie is watching this video. Um, one thing I would really like to see in the app. And I don't see why this could not be done with the way that the knobs are all digital, the buttons are digital. I don't see why this couldn't be done. But for example, say, you know, I'm DJing at a barn venue or, you know, just a hotel reception hall and maybe the bar is outside of the reception hall, right? So people are in the hallway and I've got this, you know, out by the bar in a different room uh, with, you know, say I'm wirelessly transmitting to it. 
kids love to wall with their noise. There's cool little green lights on it. Well, you can shut that off, but you know, they love noise. They love to go up and they're like, ooh, there's knobs. And they like to turn the knobs. Happened to me more than once with not this one, but other column speakers. It would be really nice if in the app, when I'm connected to it, you know, I could go into the main settings and disable speaker interface so that if somebody comes up here, none of the knobs work. Like, I would love to see that. And, you know, I think about uh, my Behringer X32. You know, you hold the home button for three seconds. It, uh, you know, locks everything. You can move all the buttons, all the faders, nothing, nothing happens. You know, they can do that here with, you know, press and hold the EQ button for three seconds. It can be as simple as that. Or, you know, press and hold, reverb, and EQ, you know, make it a two-button system to lock and unlock the speaker. You know, just in case your phone dies. You don't want to lock it in the app and then not be able to unlock it if your phone dies. But I really think that would kind of top this off and make it more functional as a speaker you could use outside of the room where you don't have to worry about a little kid fumbling around with the knobs. Now, I mean, realistically, you know, you could tape a piece of paper over it, but who likes to do that? It looks like shit. So that's, that's my one improvement. Uh, hopefully somebody from Mackie does watch this because I would love to see that in the next app and firmware update. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, final thoughts, you know, I'm replacing my JBL Eon 1 with this. It's a very lateral move. But sound quality is on point. The size, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot lighter, it looks a lot nicer. I prefer the mixer, I like having the app. Uh, Bluetooth seems to work pretty good. I haven't done a distance test by any means, but you know, overall, I, I, I bought this with a little hesitation. You know, I was worried it wasn't going to sound as good because of how much smaller it was. And sound quality is on point. And I like the look of it. I like the way it works. And I like it so much, I plan on buying a second one. And I will probably order my second one within the next week or two. Like I said, it's the slow season here. It, uh, you know, money's not growing on trees. It's February, so there ain't much going on. April is when the busy season starts. So I'll buy my second one and I'll probably use those together. I really would like to get the DLM 12S and do, do a video on, you know, using these in conjunction with a subwoofer and, you know, crossing it over and seeing, can you do a bigger event or, you know, can you just do an, a, a, an event with it and just get that a little bit more thump out of it, um, you know, I'm interested in seeing that, so it might be a few months before that happens, but uh, I'll definitely get a video uploaded, and, you know, do I recommend buying this? Yes. Uh, when this came out, you know, the JBL Eon one was $9.99, this is $9.99 in the United States, uh, JBL dropped their price down to $7.99 now, I would definitely say spend the extra 200 bucks and get the Mackie, I think you'll be happier. Um, I think it's a good upgrade. You know, I've said in other videos, a lot of these, and this is, this is, you know, oh, somebody's at the door. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. Uh, right before I started recording that video, I had a, a guy that wanted to rent some trust call me up. Said he'd be here in about 45 minutes. I either babbled way too long recording that video or he was driving a lot faster. But uh, anyways, uh, here's my JBL Eon 1, and here's what I'm replacing it with, the Mackie SRM Flex. And you can see, like, it's, there's a noticeable size difference. You know, in the height, like, this is a lot shorter. Um, still, you know, I'd say both are pretty solid. Like, obviously, the column's going to have a little wiggle to it. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think you really... The Eon one's probably a little more solid to the ground. The column doesn't seem like it's in there as solid, though. It definitely wobbles back and forth. 
But my main reasoning, I wanted something smaller. And you can kind of see the size difference now. Um, the columns for the Eon 1 do store in the back. So So that it is handy, but it does add add to the weight when somebody's trying to lift it into a vehicle, and it adds adds to the size of the overall the overall uh, system. And you know, a lot of times I'll have people put these in wrong when they return them. I flip this open, and they all come falling out the back, which is a little annoying. So I do like the Mackie has a separate case. Originally, originally I really liked the idea of having the columns stored in the unit. I just have one thing to grab, but I've had this for a while. I've used it a lot, and I just think I'm going to be happier with the, uh, the separate bag. So anyways, uh, I didn't look up the exact weight. I think this is about 10 pounds lighter than this. Uh, size comparison you can see you know when you when you look at the two of these you really almost think like you're gonna get less out of the Mackie than you are out of this just because it's so much smaller but uh, sound wise they're very on par with each other I uh, I'd recommend the Mackie over the JBL even though it's two hundred dollars more I'd spend the extra two hundred bucks I think you'll be happier for the long run and you know I would think that JBL is probably going to have to update this thing pretty soon. Either that or they're just going to keep cutting the price and try to keep selling them, you know, based on a lower price instead of based on improving the product. So, get the Mackie SRM Flex. I recommend it. I own one. I'm buying a second one. I'll do an updated review after I have gigged with it a few times. All right. Until next time, have a good day.